So normally when Laracon comes around, the team provides us with a brand new goodie to dive into. And Laracon AU this year was no different. We got Laravel Pulse, a brand new vital sign application monitor that is so lightweight, you can actually go ahead and install it in production. And the team stated that they actually have been running this in Laravel Forge, which has so many users making big requests all the time with no problems whatsoever. Sounds perfect. So let's dive in and explore together. This will be my first time installing the project. So the documentation for Pulse is directly on the Laravel site. Let's jump to installation. Uh, at least at the time of recording, Pulse is in beta. So we need to go to our composer.json file and change the minimum stability to beta. Although that probably won't be the case by the time you watch this video. Uh, we can then require Laravel Pulse using Composer. And we want to publish the service provider. All very standard stuff that you do with most Laravel packages. Finally, we migrate. PHP Artisan migrate, creates the Pulse table as expected. And then we're off to the races from the looks of it. Let's check if we can access the Pulse route. So here we go, our very own Pulse dashboard. First things first, does dark mode work? We'll come over here, we'll set it to dark. And of course it does, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna stick with light for our exploration here, but pretty cool that both are supported, looks so professional. Uh, what do we have? We have application usage, queues, cache, uh, slow queries, exceptions, slow requests, slow jobs, slow outgoing requests. So much just right out of the box. So first things first, uh, we can see who is using our application. Top 10 users making requests. I have this basic Breeze installation with some financial data that I've put together for this demo. Let's go ahead and just hit this dashboard over and over again. And I'm logged in as Jeffrey at the moment. I would now expect to see yep, 11 requests coming through from Jeffrey. Tell you what, let's log out as Jeffrey. And instead, let's log in as me. So here we go, I'm logged in as Luke. Let's hit the dashboard a few times as Luke. And in Pulse, we should now see, yep, yeah, there we go. Luke is also making requests. Very cool. Uh, we can change the view using this dropdown to users experiencing slow requests. And by default, the threshold is one second. Okay, so tell you what, let's just come into our web.php file and on the dashboard, let's sleep for one second. We'll come back, reload this dashboard, maybe just two or three times. And then let's check. Yep, in Pulse, we can see that Luke Downing has experienced some very slow requests. I also imagine this works in tandem with the slow request card, which it does. You can see, again, the threshold is by default 1000 milliseconds, and the dashboard route has counted four of those. So not only can we see who is having problems, but we can also then say, it looks like they were probably having problems on the dashboard route. Let's focus on that for our next sprint. The final view for application usage is which users are dispatching jobs, who's putting jobs onto our queues, which again should work nicely in tandem with the queue card here. So let's see if we can get our queue up and running. I actually already have a route set up where you can send out an email report which dispatches this job here. So from our terminal, let's say PHP Artisan queue work, and then let's just send the email report out a number of times. I'll just keep clicking this, and then you can see from our terminal, all of these jobs are being processed. Can we see it from Pulse? Of course, yeah, here are 10 jobs. Luke is the one who has actually dispatched those jobs and we can see this purple line, which looks like it means the job has been processed just here. Great. Uh, now, I imagine what would happen if we go into send email report and let's just delay this. So let's add sleep of three seconds, for example. And of course, we'll have to restart our queue worker. And once we have that restarted, we'll go back to our dashboard and we'll send out some more email reports. So again, I'm just clicking this. And now our single queue worker should actually be struggling to pick this job up. It should be taking some time, which should mean inside Pulse. Yeah, there we go. So now we can see it very clearly. The queue is much higher than how fast the queue is able to process the jobs that are on it. So just by glancing at this information, you'd be able to 
ascertain whether you need to add more workers to the queue to keep up with the current demand. What if we have a different queue to default? So uh, let's come back here and let's create another queue called mail, which will start. And then in our application, where we actually dispatch this job, we'll dispatch onto the mail queue. Okay. And then we'll come back to our application and we'll send out that email report a few more times. And now when we refresh Pulse, we see not only the default queue, but also that mail queue. So you can monitor all of the queues that are currently running in your application. I also imagine that in the slow jobs card down at the bottom, we see the send email report because of course we added that sleep and the default threshold is one second. Speaking of default threshold, I wonder if there's a way to configure that for these different recorders. Maybe there's a config file. Let's go to config, yeah, pulse.php. Here we go. So we already have a config file available and we have some various things we can do, such as completely disable pulse if we want to. We can change how it's stored, how the data is ingested, all very interesting stuff. Uh, the middleware, ah, here we go, recorders. Recorders gather application event data from requests and tasks to pass to your ingest driver. So basically, this is where all the data we see in the Pulse dashboard is actually coming from. So we'll come down here. We have cache interactions, exceptions, queues, slow jobs. That's what we're looking for. The threshold is set to one second. So we could probably change this, say, to three seconds. And we also have... Uh, slow requests, which is currently set to one second. What if we said 500 milliseconds instead? So in the front end now, let's take a look. Experiencing slow endpoints is now 500 milliseconds. And slow requests is 500 milliseconds. But slow jobs is three seconds. So you can configure this to your liking. And the other thing I just noticed is that you can ignore certain endpoints. So by default, Pulse is ignored. But if you had a dashboard that you know is a little slow and you're willing to make that sacrifice, then technically there's nothing to stop us adding the dashboard to the ignored uh, endpoints here. And then even if it is slower than 500 milliseconds, you won't see that information in Pulse. So it might be a nice way to keep things clean if you're not interested in monitoring certain parts of your application. We should also be able to see exceptions that are taking place in our application, which is always very useful. So let's test this out. Uh, why don't we go back into that send email report job. Instead of sleeping, I'm going to throw a new bad method call exception. Something went wrong. And then we'll start our queue worker again. And once that's in place, we can fire some things off to the queue. Send more email reports. And once that's done, we should start seeing these exceptions. So here we go. Bad method call exception was fired 13 times. It even tells us where it came from. Send email report.php on line 31, which of course is completely accurate. And I also imagine up here in mail, yeah, you see this red line? Well, that indicates that we have failed jobs. So very easy to come in and monitor the fact that, oh, the queues are not well. We need to determine what's gone wrong. And using the queue card in tandem with the exceptions card should actually allow us to get that information without any other monitoring tool installed. Why don't we take a quick look at cache as well? This seems very interesting. So I have uh, Redis set up and configured for caching. And I think a great place to cache would be on these outputs here. So I do some quite intensive queries where I'm checking the total sales for all shops belonging to a user and also checking uh, which shops have the most sales for the past month and then ordering and giving you the top 10, which is exactly what we see in the front end here. Let's say I wanted to add some caching to this. So you know well how to cache. We can call the cache facade. And let's say we want to remember and we'll call this uh, total sales. And then we'll pass a cache key. Well, let's say now at a day. So every day the dashboard will refresh. And then finally, we add a closure here, which will actually, actually execute this information as required. And let's put these on separate lines so that we can see it a little more clearly. And I don't know why it's pulling in the fully qualified namespace here, but let's get rid of that. 
So this should work just fine. Uh, let's see. We'll jump back into our dashboard and we'll refresh this page a few times. Head back into Pulse. And yeah, immediately you can see we had six hits, one miss, which is basically it actually called that closure, giving us an 85.71% hit rate. And we can see the key that was actually executed, total sales, with that information as well. Nice. Now, of course, we've actually got a bug in our application here because, well, take a look at my revenue, right? It ends 895. Let's log out and log back in as Jeffrey instead. Because I have a shared key, we're actually caching that information and leaking it to other users. So what you'd usually do here is you'd use the user ID or maybe the uh, sale ID or whatever unique identifier you have available to separate this number. So let's add a colon there. And then let's say request user ID and refresh this. And now you can see it's updated to be indicative of Jeffrey's uh, sales rather than my own. If we come back here, yeah, we see that as total sales and then colon 12 because that's the user ID of Jeffrey. Uh, if we go and log back in as myself again and then log back in and now we have total sales 11 as well. So this is nice, but imagine we have 500 users who are accessing the dashboard at the same time. This is just going to be flooded with basically the same information, but because it has a different ID, we'll see it all the time in this card. So I'd be interested to know if we go to pulse.php and at the top was cash, I think, right? Yeah, cash interactions. Uh, we have ignore. I don't want to ignore. Yeah, I want to group. Here we go. So let's duplicate this line and we'll say total sales. This is regex. So you have to get a comfortable with a bit of regex, but it's very simple stuff. So total underscore sales. And then we're looking for any character after the colon. And we want to replace it, I imagine, with total sales and then a colon and then star. So let's go back to our application and let's refresh this. And then we'll go back into Pulse. And now we see total sales star hit five times. OK, five times. I'm going to come back to the application again and log in as Jeffrey again. So test two. And let's refresh this a few times. We're getting Jeffrey's information rather than mine, which is great. But now total sales colon star is at 11. So that would be a great way to avoid flooding your cash card with information that's actually the same, but is formatted differently. Pretty cool that they've already thought of everything like that for this dashboard information. So there's one last thing I want to check out that I noticed, which is under customization for dashboard. So you can actually completely configure what the Pulse dashboard looks like, thanks to the fact that it's built on top of Livewire. Now, not to say that uh, you have to be running Livewire in your front end or for your application. It just adds it separately. Uh, you can be running whatever stack you want, but it means there's no build step to configure Pulse. So let's go ahead and run this command here. PHP Artisan vendor publish Pulse dashboard. And it looks like it's created this dashboard.blade.php file. Let's open that up. And yeah, very simple. We have X Pulse, which is obviously the wrapper. And then we have our various Pulse cards. So let's say, oh, we're not making any outgoing requests. I'm just going to remove that card entirely. I've not got a build step. I'm going to come back to the Pulse dashboard and refresh. And sure enough, the card has disappeared completely. What if we want to make the Pulse usage card full width? Well, it looks like we can just add that full keyword. Come back in. Now application usage takes up the full width. I think that's a bad example of full width, but I think maybe queues makes a lot of sense to be full width. So let's come in and do that. And now we get a much deeper insight into our queues. But of course, we probably want something to fill up this space. So why don't we pull the cash card up here? Grab that cash card and we'll drop it here. And is it 12 columns? So if I set this to eight, maybe. Yeah, there we go. 12 columns. And you can see that uh, drop in like so. And let's also set rows to two so it matches the height. Nice. As I said, there's no build step here. I'm just making these tweaks to the file and instantly seeing the results in Pulse. It's very cool. So that's a very brief look at Pulse, but yeah, already it looks like it's going to be an instant add to almost any Laravel application to see real-time monitoring 
at a speed that really doesn't impact users at all is super nice. And you can actually go ahead and extend Pulse with your own custom cards. You can build whatever functionality you can come up with. In fact, I think Aaron Francis created like a, an index for this. Was it uh, builtforpulse.com? Yeah, builtforpulse.com, uh, where he's already started compiling these custom cards that he's putting together. Interestingly, it looks like the site is running an instance of Pulse as kind of the dashboard, which is pretty meta. But you can see already, you could, for example, show a custom card that displays outdated composer dependencies or a card that displays disk metrics so that you know if you're running out of disk space, for example. Pretty nice. So keep your eye out in the community for additional cards or try your hand at building your own card that you can slap into Pulse and easily monitor your application going forwards. That's Laravel Pulse. Hope you've enjoyed our first foray into it. And I'll see you again soon.